Hello everyone, I'm Kevin, otherwise known as Form BX257, here to bring you another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. And today I'll be continuing on with my highly requested G.I. Joe vehicle playset, the 1987 Defiant Space Vehicle Launch Complex. Now, if you haven't watched part one, I highly urge you to watch that first, as I'll be referencing it throughout this video. But today, I'll be taking a look at the Space Shuttle Defiant and its astronaut pilot payload. And this is the Defiant Space Shuttle. Looking at it, you can see it's not your typical modern day space shuttle uh, design approach with the long fuselage and the delta wings underneath. This has what you would call a lifting bodies type of airframe. And those types of airframes were very uh, popular back in the 60s which is where this toy gets its uh, design influence from. That's right, the Defiant is based on an actual spaceship prototype. Back in the 60s, the Martin Aircraft Company was famous for making lifting body type X-Jets for the United States Air Force, like the one Steve Austin crashes in the beginning of the $6 million man. Today, the company is better known as Lockheed Martin, maker of a very familiar looking craft called the Venture Star. But the Defiant is clearly based on this 1964 prototype. Notice the curvy body, prominent spine, three tail fins, and the cockpit cabin seating arrangement? Just by itself, the Defiant Space Shuttle is a very large toy. It's about 21 and a half inches long by about 12 and a half inches wide. Here's a Sky Striker just for a size comparison. And while the Sky Striker still sort of beats it a little bit by height and width, to be honest, I think the Defy wins out in sheer volume. The cockpit opens up and back using a hinged arm as well as a piston. And you can see just like the space glider, the arrangement of the seats is exactly the same. The rear two figures are held in place by this geared console. Underneath the cockpit, on either side, are these hidden panels. By pushing in this little tab, it opens up this bay with a laser in it. Now this is actually as far as you can actually open this thing, which is really kind of strange. And personally I think it's kind of a design fault. You actually have to unhook this part here in order for this to come out any further and then the laser can actually swivel out a little bit more. It's like that on either side. And even the nose cone is removable to show avionics detail. In order to open either of the bay doors, you have to be a little bit careful. In the semicircle right here, there's a bit of a lip which helps lock down the doors. You have to overcome that first. But before you just swing it open, you have to shift your um, the method of holding it and your force to back here where the hinges are. Because you have to hold it here because the hinges are a little bit fragile and you have to sort of ease it out here rather than holding it from the middle. I've removed one of the doors so you can get a better look at what the bay looks like. There are 13 foot pegs in the bay including ones on the uh, on the frame here, which are actually covered up by the doors once you close them, so they're not much use uh, as storage for figures once the bay doors are closed, obviously. Of course, it wouldn't be a space shuttle without a robotic arm in here. 
and the GI Joes is actually quite long and kind of useful too. It's attached to a base which swivels. Unfortunately it doesn't swivel 360 degrees but it does give a wide range of motion. The main arm pivots on a hinge and the extension arm also pivots but is on a ratchet unlike the main arm which for some strange reason isn't. The claw is also on a very tight uh, ratchet that's certainly not letting go of anything that's in its pinchers. On top of that is this cannon. Now this cannon isn't really pegged in there. I thought mine was broken or something but apparently they're all like this. It's just a very shallow peg and it's just uh, it just sort of rests on top of that hole. It's, it's very easy to knock off as well. While the bay is very highly detailed and of course a kid can use his imagination and uh, use these as computers or mechanical items to interact with the action figure. There's actually not a lot of things that are in the bay to interact with the action figures except for two things. One is this plug here which is meant to be used with the umbilical cord. Now I'll talk about a little bit more about the umbilical cord later when I get to the action figure as you are supposed to hook this up onto the action figures MMU or Man Maneuvering Unit backpack and it just sort of plugs in here rather easily in fact. The other is the hatchway of course you can use the hatchway to as an extra doorway outside of the uh, shuttle. Fortunately it's not wide enough for action figures to have the MMU backpack on them while using this doorway but this has a second use and that's when it's attached to the booster rocket space station. And here's a look at the left side of the bay and this is the underside of the space shuttle. Notice that there's this rectangular uh, piece here which is sort of embedded. It has a lot of really nice detail work in there but this uh, rectangular piece is actually what connects to the space station portion of the launch complex. Of course right in the middle here that's the hatchway and we also have a another umbilical cord um, peg there which personally I find it to be a bit um, a bit stronger a bit deeper than the one that was in the inside strangely enough and another interesting thing is that I think this was supposed to be a foot peg the standard GI Joe foot peg hole is just a bit too um, too big for it. It's rather unfortunate. Oddly enough I have this uh, Leonard Well Power Girl, the Simone Johnson figure in fact, and it fits on perfectly despite being a figure which was made more than a decade later with some nice rubbery tires. The front landing gear is manual so you just flip it down. It actually does have some tabs here so you can just flip that up to open it up again. The rear landing gear are exactly the same as the front landing gear with rubberized tires, details in the hubs and even some detail in the axles which is admittedly a bit hard to see here but retracting them is actually a different affair. You see on the back of the thruster panel are these two gray levers, one for each of the landing gear. So you have to raise them up independently 
to retract the landing gear. Attaching the space shuttle to the booster rocket is fairly easy. There are these hooks here on both sides and they will just hook onto the ledge here, this white piece that which just extends out from the panel. And when everything's lined up on the rear, then you can just drop this nose cone down right on top of the latch here. And this is just a metal bar, which is cut, which is unique to the uh, Defiant. Just drop it down, and everything just locks in place. There's a tongue on the latch here, which you depress in order to release that. The space shuttle has five of these thruster nozzles in two different sizes. The large size here and a small size. They come out fairly easy so it's always a fairly good thing to check to see if you're buying a space shuttle or even the entire set on the aftermarket make sure you have all the right um, thrusters on here. One interesting thing is that the large thrusters on the booster rocket are exactly the same as the ones from the space shuttle. They are interchangeable even though none of the other ones are. The fins are also another thing to really look out for because unfortunately the fins have these angled slots which means that this angled slot specifically goes on this side, one that has the reverse angled slot goes on the other side and one that has that straight slot goes in the middle. They're um, position specific. So if you're looking for an extra fin, be very careful which side you're actually trying to uh, get. There's a really fun Easter egg molded into the Defiant, but in order to actually see it, I'll have to remove the uh, cockpit hatch. Of course, you don't need to do that to see it. It's just a little easier to film that way. And of course, you'll see how the uh, hinge and the piston was attached to the um, cockpit cover in order for it to uh, slide backwards. And here's the piston. And the uh, hinge arm. And the, and the peculiar little Easter egg is right up there in the corner. Can you see it? It's a little mouse sculpted in the back of the cockpit. And now it's time for... Does a modern figure fit in it? I'll be using this 2009 Rise of Cobra Footloose figure as my example. Sort of bend his legs a little bit. And he fits right in there, in the cockpit seat at least. But can he fit in the back seats as well? Perfectly. And now it's time to take a look at the Defiant Space Shuttle pilot and astronaut Payload. Now Payload's outfit isn't based on any real world spacesuit, but you can definitely tell that it is a spacesuit. I mean, beyond just the all white color, you also have a lot of wrinkles, a lot of padding, and it is slightly bulky. Now I've seen other um, space outfit figures and they're based on real world uh, outfits they're kind of bulky and they don't really pose very well obviously but because he kind of skirts that sort of uh, middle ground between you know the thinness of an action figure to help it pose and the bulkiness of an astronaut suit well I think it does a really good job of that. There are some very interesting little details as well such as the patch as well as the 
sidearm <laughs> that he decided to mold onto his leg here. If you notice, it has the handle of a revolver. Not any type of automatic or space weapon. A revolver of all things. How peculiar is that? And now to take a look at his accessories. The first one is his helmet. A very nice well detailed little helmet there. With its very distinctive uh, peaked crest there. Another thing that uh, payload here comes with is unfortunately the hardest thing to get on this figure. It actually, uh, this alone really bumps up the value of the figure. And that is his MMU, or Manned Maneuvering Unit, backpack. very easy to uh, pop off and lose are these little um, handles. Unfortunately they're they're also fairly brittle. Mine are kind of warped in fact but uh, um, they do maneuver up and down just so that you have, you have a choice of grips if you want the figure to have a, a high arm grip or kind of low. Of course they fold down out of the way fairly easily as well. It used to be kind of a debate as to whether you should really include this with the figure as part of its accessories because this also hooked on to the um, to the booster space station like it had its own little spot for this so it was sometimes considered to be part of the station but personally I do consider it part of the figure. One very interesting thing is you'll note that there is of course a hole in the back and that is, of course, for the umbilical cord. Now, this thing isn't considered part of Payload's accessories. I guess you could consider it part of the uh, Defiant Space Shuttle instead, as most people do, even though you could hook this thing up onto this booster rocket space station as well. And, of course, all this um, wire is, really, is a 14-inch long piece of 10-gauge wire and that's what the original was. What I have here is something that I just picked up at the uh, hardware store. It's just unmarked wire. And even if you do have marked wire, it's fairly easy just to take some uh, an alcohol wipe and just rub it right off. It mostly does that uh, uh, on its own. Of course, what you do with this wire is you hook it up onto the back of the uh, MMU. While it's a shame to have to decide this, but if you can only get one of the three components of the Defiant Space Vehicle Launch Complex, I would highly recommend the shuttle. Yes, it has a pile of faults, including inexplicably separate landing gear levers, hidden laser panels that don't open up fully, a robot arm which doesn't ratchet at the load-bearing joint, and shallow umbilical cord plug holes, but it more than makes up for it just by existing. Think about it. Is there another 1 to 18 action figure scale realistic space shuttle out there? The only one that comes close in my mind is the 1979 Fisher Price Alpha Probe. Although quite small, it is styled after a modern orbiter. Or the 1999 Lannard Toys Star Force Space Lab shuttle, which admittedly looks more like the Venture Star, another actual space vehicle. And the 1989 G.I. Joe Crusader Space Shuttle is another great stand-in, as it should be seeing as it uses the Defiant mold, but changes a few parts and recolors others. The Crusader does not have the metal docking bar underneath the nose, so it can't be used with the booster unless modified. And it gets rid of the robot arm in favor of garage space for the included mini-vehicle Avenger Scoutcraft. The Avenger is a cool reuse of the mold from the 1986 Night Raven drone. 
The pod within the shuttle arrangement reminds me of the Alpha probe, so we're back there again. I was seriously considering the Crusader set, which came with a recolored payload, as an alternative to the Defiant, when finding the original Joe shuttle began to look impossible. The size and volume, as well as the neat astronaut figure, not only makes an impressive display even on a shelf filled with other large aircraft, it's actually quite fun to pick up and play around with. I'm equally impressed with Payload. Despite his outfit not being based on a real spacesuit, it still gets all the cues right, but still isn't too bulky. It's a bit futuristic, but it isn't too Star Trek. As for the figure's MMU backpack, the only real hard part to find are the two control sticks. They're necessary for a completionist's collection, but the MMU looks just fine without them, from a distance. Don't have the MMU at all? No problem. Any big white backpack will be a good substitute, like the 1990 Sub-Zero backpack, for instance. Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind-the-scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video, and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.